volley fire, or more correctly in archery, volley shooting. It's something that many of us are familiar with, the synchronized knocking and shooting of arrows together in a massed formation. We see this in games and movies all the time, and it has become as synonymous with archery as Robin Hood. This has become one of those things which are simply assumed and stated as fact, but is it? The main problem that we have today is that we have very few records of exactly how archery was done historically. We have a few small gems, illustrations, fragments of chronicles, but nothing resembling a manual of arms that tells us precisely how archers fought in battle. Without being able to visualize the battle, we have to fill in the gaps, and that typically results in what we see in film. In this video, we'll discuss how volley shooting might have worked, reasons why it might not have been utilized, and why it might have been. I want to start with the how, because in our modern perspective, we tend to overlook the basic logistics of how armies and battles work. Battles were not like a strategy game where you can click on units and they respond to the god general in the sky. Yes, my lord. Job, job. So given that a person on the ground can't see the other 10,000 troops on the battlefield, how was it possible to even coordinate a volley? You can't exactly shout at your men to aim and shoot together when your voice can only reach John in the front rank. For a lord or general to command an army, there would need to be several things in place. Perhaps a system of flags and banners that signify certain actions, runners and messengers would definitely have been used, and instruments such as trumpets and drums would have been used to set the rhythm for marching and likely shooting arrows. That said, a lord or captain in charge of a wing or a smaller unit would be expected to have a degree of autonomy. You can't wait for orders. The autonomy would trickle down to the individual. Many battles were won and lost on the back of a few men who charged in at the right or wrong moment. This would apply to archers as well, as a single archer would be expected to mark and shoot a target without being told what to do, and without a flashing green marker somewhere above. That said, even with the signalling methods used at the time, it would not be hard to imagine how a group of archers could be synchronised. So it is possible to shoot in massed volleys. But did they? There are many reasons to assume that volley shooting was not used. Some of the common ones are that a formation of archers would have to shoot at the speed of the slowest man. It would have been impractical to have archers hold at full draw, waiting for a single loose command. Long range arcing arrows are less effective from that angle than direct shooting. A steady stream of arrows would be more effective than predictable volleys. Some have also pointed out the lack of historical sources and illustrations that show bows being aimed upwards. Historian Mike Lodes, in his book The Longbow, raises some interesting evaluations on the use of the English longbow. He points out that the term volley is ambiguous. Historic accounts often describe volleys of arrows or depict arrows as a rain. However, rain is constant. When you have thousands of archers on the battlefield, there is going to be thousands of arrows in the air. This doesn't necessarily mean that they were shot in mass volleys. There's also the argument that shooting long-range volleys was ineffective and a waste of resources. While the English longbow had an effective range of around 250 yards, historical descriptions of battles seem to indicate that most of the shooting was done under 80 yards. One thing to remember is that the English longbow had a rather flat trajectory. So in this role, archers were using direct shooting, again implying that they were not shooting in volleys. Arab archery also makes a similar comment, with the range of approximately 80 yards also being the distance where the arrow would not go higher or lower than the point of aim, and that an archer who engages beyond this distance is committing a mistake. 
At these distances and closer, direct shooting is more effective if archers were to shoot at their own speed rather than await a command. Individual shooting allows an archer to spot their own arrow and engage targets more accurately when the fighting reaches close quarters. So if direct shooting was more effective, were long range volleys used at all? Yes, the accounts of the Battle of Agincourt describe the English archers opening the battle with long range volleys to entice the French into battle. Generals in the Tang Dynasty of China used a formation in which crossbows would shoot in volleys and then rotate to reload. We should also consider that there are prescribed aiming methods for long range shooting using the underhand with the target below the arm as taught in English archery and similarly described in Arab archery. Long range shooting would have been used in many battles out of necessity, especially with enemy archers shooting at you. Given that archers generally load and shoot with similar speed, they would be effectively shooting in what we consider to be volleys. With some staggered effect, even though they might not be specifically commanded to do so. So what do we need to consider when saying yay or nay? Firstly, our audience tends to be biased toward English longbows and its historical record in war. Remember that not everyone used a 150 pound war bow. We also have to consider other kinds of bows, some of which have a short direct fire distance and probably would have been used for skirmishing. Horse archery techniques tend to favour hit and run, such as the Parthian tactics and those used by the Scythian tribes, or the Canterbury Circle, in which the riders would continually shoot arrows at the enemy formation as they rode past. I'd also question whether our interpretation of how volley shooting was commanded is too rigid. The argument that an archer could not hold at full draw would not be valid if the archer was never required to hold at full draw. In our minds, we have the ready aim fire process, which in archery might be knock, draw, loose. And while it's true that you can't just stop and wait, it's not inconceivable that a command might be something like archers knock and archers loose. You can still execute a volley without holding onto the shot for the length of a Dragon Ball Z episode. Finally, what can we conclude about volley shooting? I think that sufficient evidence exists to show that volley shooting was something that was practiced and used in warfare. Even today, the archery discipline of clout shooting has its roots in the style of archery. I think that a volley, whether intended or not, is likely to be something done to open a battle. The mistake that we make in looking back is that we think of archers only shooting in volleys. It would be a reasonable assumption that as the battle progressed and the distance closed, archers would shoot on their own accord. In fairness, we shouldn't say that archers always shot in volleys or never shot in volleys. Volley shooting was something that was historically likely to have been done, but unlikely to be the dominant method of using a bow in battle. This is New Sensei. I hope you found this interesting and I'll see you next time.